Okay, I'm back. Um, I am 10 hearts into this. And 10 hearts is about the right size for a bracelet. So, what you're going to do to end this is you're going to copy when you get to your 10th heart. You're going to copy what you did on this end. You're going to add a gold, a fire polish, a gold, and then a ring of nine seed beads. And then you're going to go through it twice, making knots as you go. And you're going to go, I can't travel this. I'm going to stop the camera one more time and finish beading this because this is going to be a necklace. And I need to do like, I don't know how many more inches. I need to do like 30 more hearts to make this the right length. And then I will come back and show you me putting on the last ring. And then what we do is, after we put on the last series of three beads and the ring of gold, then we're going to travel our needle around the ring of gold a couple times, making knots as we go. And then we're going to travel the needle back through the entire project, going down around and doing the underneath. So you're going to needle from the bottom of each heart and back through this set of three beads. Go down to the next heart, make a little half hitch right here. Go back up, through, back, make a little knot. Go up, through, down, make a knot. And you're going to do this all the way back through the entire project until you get back over to here. And then you're going to finish by going back through this last set around here and back through it again and back down and making a knot down here. A couple knots, make a knot here, go up here, make a knot, go through here and make a knot, knot, knot. And make some knots an inch to two inches away from your original start location to finish. And then after you make your last knot, you can cut off. And I will show you how to do that with one more small video. And then I'll show you how I put on the clasp. And all I'm using for my clasping is, I'm going to use a snap clasp. These are like, they're real easy. You just snap them together, push on the center, it snaps apart. It's kind of like a safety clasp. I like these on the bracelets. So this is what would go on here. It's a nice slim line look. And all you need is jump rings. So you jump ring either end to either end of your bracelet and you're done. It's so easy. Or you can do a toggle and I have this really cool little heart toggle that I think I will use for the necklace and I'll, once again all I have to do is jump ring it together I just finish the chain and then I can just jump ring this on last so I think I will continue working and I'll check back up with you in just a few minutes Hi, it's me. I um, ran out of line on my necklace. And so I wanted to show you how I splice in new line. I tend to try to pick a spot where um, I will get kind of some uninterrupted uh, an uninterrupted place to like lay down the knot. Something that'll have holes, big holes that the knot will go through and I can run my needle back through it again. This whole necklace has fairly good holes. So I don't need to worry too much about where the knot is. If it was peyote, 
um, you weave your needle in and out all over the peyote piece to lock in a new line, but you can't do that with daisy chains. So my not so foolproof way of knotting in line is to take the new piece of line, which is this one, and knot it to the old line, which is in my right hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them together and I'm going to do a balloon knot or an overhand knot. Okay. And then I run my finger over it backwards to tighten it, but it's fire line, so the knot will still slip. If you pull on it, it'll pull apart, so you don't want that to happen. What you want to do is just do one more half hitch on top of that knot, and now it'll stay in place. So I'm going to continue working with this here, and I let the whiskers as I work hang out of my work, so when I log back on, to show you guys how I finished this piece in, and for you it'll be a second, for me it'll be like, you know, another half hour. But when I log back on, you will see the whiskers sticking out of the work. I don't cut off all my whiskers until I'm absolutely done with the piece. So now we're sitting at like 16 inches, and that is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30 hearts. Actually, I'm sitting at 17 and a half inches. So I'll be putting like, a, I think I'll put like six more hearts on this. We get two hearts per inch. And I think I want it to be not quite, so we go two, four, six, that's three more inches. That makes this necklace 20, 20 inches long, which will hang my breastbone. So I might cut it down to four more hearts because the clasp I'm using, once I use once I use the jump rings and everything, this will add a whole inch and a half. So I got to leave that as part of my final computation is to include how many inches just the clasp adds, which is probably an inch and a half. So we'll do four more hearts, which is two more inches. I'm at 17 now, 17 and a half. So that's 18 and a half, 19 and a half, and an inch and a half for the clasp is exactly 20 inches and that is going to be a perfect length and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I run my needle back through this to finish this stuff off okay okay so I have gotten to my 19 inches you can see from my work that after I made my splice I just kept beating over the top of the knot and I left the whiskers to hang out. And the knot is not there, it's actually up here somewhere. I just lay the beads over the top of all of it. And that's fine to do. I know the knot is fairly secure. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the end loop on and then I'm going to go back through all of this and make knots all the way through so I will be reinforcing it again as I go through to finish this. So I'm at the spot where I'm going to make this end the duplicate of this end, okay? So I have to put on my little three bead sequence and the nine seed beads. doesn't want to focus. And then I will be traveling the needle back through all of this. Beep.
down to here where I'm going to go back through all of this again and back through here and backtrack and make some knots as I go and then I will finally cut off. I know none of that makes sense but when you're doing this kind of beadwork knots are your friend. So the last three beads boop and then I'm going to go and pick up the nine Okay, two, three, five, six, oops, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Picked up one too many. Oh, no, I didn't, because that bead is part of the three beads. Seven, eight, nine. Okay. And then we pull all this down. And then I'm going to go back through those nine beads. See how I put my nail on the work and pull the slack out of all of it. I'm going to go through this a couple of times to reinforce that loop. Too much coffee today. Yikes. Okay. And I reinforce this loop twice, but I'm going to be coming down here to go through it one more time. So I'm going to go through this loop three times because this, this point here and the point in between each little heart are the weakest points in this chain. So you can't reinforce them enough really. knots. thing about fire line is the knots are fairly easy to get out. Usually just by pulling on them, they'll just pop right out. Sometimes you have to backtrack a little and finesse it, but thankfully because fire line slides over itself, it's fairly easy to get knots out, thank God right? Knots are no fun. Ah. Okay. So I'm going to pull the slack out of that. Travel my needle back through this. So now I'm going to start on the arduous process of traveling. I did not want that needle to go through that 50 knot. I'm backtracking. We want it to go this way. Right there is where I wanted it to go. Okay. So every couple of hearts, I am going to stop and do a little half hitch. So all we're really re doing is reinforcing the initial line that we laid to create the necklace.
Notice how I always have my thumb on top of where I'm pulling my thread because that also, putting my thumb over all of this also prevents knotting. And then I'm going to go down here. It's no fun, but it makes the piece, once you start going back through and knotting this, you will see how it tends to pull the necklace together a little bit more so that it's not so loosey-goosey, but it'll still lay very nicely. Okay, so right here is where I'm gonna do a half hitch. And I'm gonna go, yikes. See what I'm doing? I'm actually just making a loop right there. I'm creating a loop. I'm going to catch it with my needle. And then I'm going to pull that. And what that just did was it created a half hitch knot. Okay. And I'm going to keep going. And you're only doing this as you go back through the project. You're only doing this on the bottom half of the hearts because you will remember that while you were creating, you don't need to go, you don't need to go back through this 50 knot. That's already been gone through twice. Just take your line. Once you get up here to this 11 knot, where my line is coming out of. See that? And then just pass your needle through through there and and just ignore that 15 knot right there. So you will remember that when you were creating Oops, I got a little bit of situation here. Ay, ay, ay. Come on. I swear sometimes, okay, those are the whiskers from my other knot. So you remember when we were creating the heart, we passed through the heart once all the way around and then again and then continued on. Well, this part of the heart's been gone through twice. So that's why to finish the necklace, we're going to go back through the whole thing and reinforce the places where we only traveled the needle once. And we only traveled the needle once through this three bead series and once along the bottom of the heart, which is why I'm going to go through every two hearts and make a half hitch knot and keep going back through the bottom of the hearts and the three bead series and the bottom of the heart all the way back to this other loop way down here to finish off this necklace. And as you work, you will see for yourself that once where all of this felt looser, it'll start to feel more cohesive, more like it's all one piece. And so we're going to do that. And I will come back in a few minutes and show you as I get to the other end. What that starts to look like. Now, like I said, this is a necklace. If you only want a bracelet, just do 10 beaded hearts and you will have the length that you need 
for a bracelet that fits an average size wrist, an average, average size mature woman's wrist, grown up lady. Children have smaller wrists, so you might only use eight or nine hearts to make a bracelet for a child. But for an average size woman, and most women have a bracelet size of seven and a half inches or a wrist size when you measure close of six inches, and this bracelet fits a perfectly an average size woman when you use 10 hearts and a clasp that'll take up about an inch in, um, in clasping length, that, which will be part of your finished length. The clasping is always part of your finished length, so always compute the clasping as part of your finished length. So seed beads and all, Um, dang it, I'm just having one of those days where like none of the parts are making sense. Oh, and that's why, because my needle got stuck in the wrong part of the loop and now it's oh, there. Yikes. Okay. I'm going to continue working and I will catch you guys up when I get to the other end. Goodbye. Back soon. Okay, so hopefully this is the last section. I am just now approaching the far end of my piece. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So I'm going to travel the needle through the bottom of the heart. And then I'm going to go around all this again to reinforce all that work. And I might do this a couple of times. See if the needle fits through all of it. I never want to force my needle because you'll crack beads when you do that. So if your needle's not going through um, maybe sometimes you can size down like to a 12 or to a 13 and uh, usually you can get the needle through the work then that way it just depends so I'm going to go ahead and hit all of this heart one more time Not sure if my needle wants to go. Yeah, it's going to go through there. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not a professional workshop person. So, <laughs> I mean, in in person classes, yes, but on video, no. So I keep forgetting. There's a camera that I have to like. Gets, I have to get my work like in the image, the viewfinder of the camera, and I'm like, duh, I can't do that. Okay, so we'll go through all of this again. And all this is doing is just shoring up the work and giving it some strength. So that it doesn't wear. I mean, seed bead, seed bead work is going to wear. It's just needles and thread. But hopefully, if you do it right, it actually has a lot of longevity. So you know, you 
I want to make all those weak points not so weak. Go right there. Look at me going three beads at once. Ha ha. Okay. Let me go back through here. And then I'm going to go and travel it down through the bottom of this little heart. Yeah, I know I cover up the work a lot with my hand, but that's how I keep the thread from not knotting. See how I did that little half hitch right there? And then I'm gonna go, I think I'll go one more heart over and do another couple knots over there. And then I'm ready to cut off. Another half hitch right there. And I think I'll go down just one more. Skip the 15. There's not one on this side, but there is on the other side. Skip the 15. Okay. And then we'll go here. Right, and then here I will do oops. And a couple of fancy little knots right there. That was a sewing knot. You go twice around the loop that you create for your half hitch. So do it one more time. So I'm going to put my half hitch right there and you go once through the loop and then once more through the loop oops Let's see if i can get this to work this is a sewing knot but it works see how i went around and i twisted my thread around the side of the loop twice instead of just going through the loop once for a half hitch i did it twice and I'm going to pull that knot and then this is where I'm going to cut off. Okay, so I'm done. I've got gone back all through all my work all along the bottom of the hearts and made knots. And so now I'm going to cut and I did not use any glue in this project so let's hope that it holds up. Because I don't think if you knot it properly. So when I cut, because I've gone to extreme lengths to put knots into this piece, hopefully I can just cut. So I pull my work against the back of my scissors and give it a nip. I'm going to do that on this one. 
and I'm going to do that on these whiskers. One, and that also is why we used Fireline because Fireline is tough. And you have to have really sharp scissors to work with it and it's harder for it to wear. So hopefully, because there aren't any crystals in this piece, the fire line will hold up for a long time and it'll be durable. And there's the little necklace. How cute is that? Okay, so let's put, I'm getting seed beads everywhere. Let's put this little heart on it. And I wanted to I'm going to double ring this and single ring that. And I just need a flat nose. Okay, so jump rings are made to be opened from side to side not twisted open. They're made to be open like this. See? And then I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And put that on. And then you just twist it back closed again. And you want to make sure that there are any gaps in the ring from the top or the side. That looks good. And then I'm going to do Okay. And the beauty of this little project is that you can literally make these cute little hearts out of anything, any color, any size bead. I mean, you could size up to eight dots. And that would be a really cute heart. It'd be a lot bigger. It'd be really cute. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's all right. I'm checking for gaps. Uh, I need to reopen this bottom one because I didn't put it on the necklace. And that's so Cheryl. Yeah, that's there we go. That's good. how cute. <laughs> that is adorable. It's just so sweet. So that is the project and I hope you enjoy it and good luck. Write me questions if you have um, or messages or comments if you have questions and I'll look at them and see if I can answer them. You can also find me on Facebook. If you see my symbol, let me get a card. If you see my logo, 
the spiral with the dragonfly on it, that's me. That's me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, my website, Etsy, uh, to name a few. Pinterest, if you see this, my brand name, this is my logo, you found me. And you can message me through any one of those apps and I will answer questions. So I hope you enjoy the project. Thanks so much.